And what we're talking about is head faith versus heart faith. And it's so important for you to know the difference. Uh, a lot of people, they assume that because they agree with the teaching of God's Word, they love the preaching of the Word, that, um, that they're in faith in these areas when really they've never really used their faith. They've just been agreeing with the things of God and agreeing with the Word of God, but it's never been put to the test. They've never had to really stand on the Word. And so when it comes time to, to, to face an actual mountain <laughs> or a problem, uh, they find it difficult or maybe it doesn't work and they don't know why. Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty three, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, that right there tells me you can do this because you are a whosoever. I'm a whosoever. So faith will work for anyone and anyone can believe. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, the mountain represents Whatever's an obstacle, any obstacle in your life that you're dealing with, that mountain represents that. Uh, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, and that's the part we're focusing on, but shall believe where in his heart he shall have whatsoever he saith. So really the whole thing revolves around believing in your heart. All the other components of this verse, um, the exercise of faith, won't work if the faith is not in your heart, if you're not believing in your heart. We made this statement that faith will work in your heart with doubt in your head, and that's true. It's so important that we have faith in our heart or we're believing in our heart. And you might say, well, where else can you believe? Well, in your mind, in your head. You can agree and believe and and do all of these things intellectually, but it won't produce the results because it's intellectual and faith is of the heart. Uh, it's it's not bad to believe things in your mind and in, in your head, and we're not uh, we're not against that. In fact, if you uh, have an education, a degree, if you are a, a professional, or if you have a trade, if you're doing something as an occupation, you've learned those things in your mind and intellectually, and it's important to educate our minds. We're aware of our physical surroundings with our minds. We contact the intellectual world with our minds, and there's nothing wrong with that. However, there's something deeper than that, and it's, it's your spirit, it's your heart. And faith is of the heart. If we're going to be successful in the area of faith in God, then we've got to believe in our heart. And, and you do this, we do this already with other things. The, the point is, if you're going to speak to a specific mountain today, you're going to have to believe that in your heart. It's not just enough to just believe God and believe there is a God in your heart. You've got to believe that the things that you say are going to come to pass in your heart. And that's different than believing in God. Now, you do believe in God with your heart. And you, if you're born again, the Spirit bears witness with your spirit or your heart that you are a child of God. So that is already, you've already experienced that. You have that uh, to stand on and to go on. You believe that there's a God. You believe in God. You believe you're a Christian, a child of God in your heart. So it's not hard to do, but we need to know that there's a difference between believing in the heart and believing in the head. Let me read this scripture, uh, 2 Corinthians. I said that last time. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. Paul said, The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So we are spiritual people, and we discern the things of God in our spirit. It's, it's important that we allow the Word of God to register on our hearts, especially if you're believing in a, for a certain specific answer, uh, a mountain, a giant, a sickness, a disease, a need in your life, and you, and you want God to get involved, We've got to have that word in our heart. And in order to do that, you know, it doesn't just happen because you've been around the right people or you've been going to church for years or you have a lot of series that you listen to or books that you read. Those things help, 
but they don't guarantee that faith is of the heart. It takes time, and, and one of the things that I'm, I believe happens is people rush this. Uh, I've been around Christians a long time, and, and uh, in, in my meetings, we do healing meetings, and I would encourage people to wait. Wait one day, two days, three days before you get prayed for for healing, especially if, if you've been trying to get healed for a long time and you've been prayed for many times. Obviously, something's not, not working or you would have already received your manifestation and we wouldn't continually be praying for people. So when that's the case, I encourage them, stop, slow down. Don't come up for prayer tonight. Listen to the word. Listen to the truths on that subject and allow those to begin to register on your heart. You've got to trust God's word in your heart Stand on the word in your heart and let that become more real than the symptom, than the obstacle, than the disease. Uh, here's the scripture that I think is, is it really brings this home is Proverbs 20, uh, Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. Proverbs 4, 20 says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. So you can see right there that this is not something that you can just brush over or just do quickly. It's not a matter of, yeah, I know the, the rules. I know, I know all of the steps to take and I know the keys. I'm just going to do this and it's going to work. You've got to give attention to the word. You've got to incline your ear to the sayings. Uh, don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. I like what the New uh, Living Translation says. It says, My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Do not lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart. Man, that is such a good phrase. That's such a good way to say that. And I'm convinced that many people rush through the prayer of faith and they haven't let the word penetrate deep into their heart. They're trying to do it because they want it, they need it, they understand God has it, God's promised it. But, but the one thing they lack is they haven't let that word penetrate deep into their heart so that the word of God means more to them than the physical problem, the physical need. So that the word on the inside of them is more real than the obstacle on the outside. I've heard people say this for years, but it's so true. You get it on the inside before you get it on the outside. And I don't know how many times that's happened in my life. I mean, you get it. You, you, you stay with the word. You stay with the promises until all of a sudden you've got it. And once you get to that point, nobody can take it away from you. And I keep going back to these same examples because we can all identify. But once you cross that bridge, jump that hurdle where you believe there's a God and you know there's a God, you know it down on the inside, nobody's going to talk you out of that. I don't care how many astronomers and astrologists and scientists tell us there's no God. It's not going to talk me out of it. I know there's a God. I believe that with all my heart. I got it. Well, there are other things that you can get like that, but you don't get it by just skimming over the top. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s and watch the streaming video for free by entering code FREE at checkout.